John Gordon is an American author and speaker on the topics of leadership, culture, sales, and teamwork. Gordon's training program called the Energy Bus Animated Training Program was released in 2015 and is an interactive course based on Gordon's best-selling book, The Energy Bus. So we're going to talk to John here about how you got involved in leadership. Let's start with that. Well, I think I always wanted to be a, a more positive leader myself. Actually, I was miserable. Okay. Negative, 31 years old, Ooh. lost my job during the dot-com crash, okay. and my wife came up to me and said, I love you, but I'm not going to spend my life with someone who makes me so miserable. Like, you need to change, and I need to change. I wanted to change. I wanted to be a better person, and I looked at myself and realized, you know, I was negative. I wasn't living my purpose, and I asked what I was born to do. I'll never forget. Writing and speaking literally came to me Ooh. in that moment. From God's mouth to my ears, I said, all right, this is what I'm going to do. What am I going to speak about? So I started to research ways I could be more positive because I wanted to be more positive. And that led me to researching positive psychology, practicing those ideas. I started a weekly positive tip. People actually started reading it. I had five subscribers initially though, my mother, my brother, best friend from totally Cornell sure. University. Yeah. And they were reading that newsletter whether I liked it or not. And then over, over time, uh, you know, more and more people started sharing it. And that led to writing books, then speaking. 28 books later, that's what I do now. Amazing. What is the key to your change, transformation from negativity to positivity and you with your business? Yeah. How do you get people to change? Who you are determines how you lead. Of course, people have to want to change. You can't drive anyone else's bus. You are the driver of your bus. And so for me, it was like, I wanted to change. I wanted to get better. And you have to be willing to look at your flaws, mm -hmm. look at your mistakes, look at what needs healing, look at at the holes in your soul that, that need to be healed. And that was me, that was my journey of going on this journey of forgiveness, of healing, and daily walks of gratitude. Like every day, mm. I read you can't be stressed and thankful at the same time. So every repeat day, that, repeat that. you can't be stressed and thankful at mm. the same time. So every day I started taking walks of gratitude. And while I'm walking, I'm practicing gratitude. What you're doing in that moment is you're flooding your brain and body with these positive emotions that uplift you rather than the stress hormones that slowly drain you and over time slowly kill you. So doing that each day, my new book, The One Truth, that, that just came out, really talks about this. Back then, I didn't know that I was tuning my mind mm -hmm. to a more positive frequency, more positive thoughts. And as you do that each day, you start to flood your brain, your body with these positive thoughts, with these emotions that over time uplift you, encourage you, inspire you, actually renew your mind on a daily basis. Yeah. And so instead of the negative thoughts bringing you down and actually separating, dividing, causing anxiety, because the root for the Greek word of anxious means to separate and divide. So instead of feeling those emotions, those thoughts, that negativity and fear dividing you, the positive thoughts uplift you, unite you, encourage you, and allow you to have more power and strength. Wow. Tell us about The One Truth. Yeah, this book I, I wrote after working with all these different companies and organizations. You know this. A team that is united and connected mm -hmm. is a more powerful team. When they are one, mm -hmm. they are powerful. When they are divided and separate, they are a weak team. And it's the same thing with us. When we feel united and connected to our purpose, to others, to spiritually, to God, the creator of the universe, because you're never meant to be separate from your creator. And when you feel that oneness, you feel that power. You feel peace. You feel joy. You feel confidence. You feel courage. When you feel separate and divided, you feel anxious, worried, and powerless. And you know what's interesting? With mental health disorders, when we move from oneness to separateness, we move from positive to negative. All mental health disorders report feelings of what? Isolation, mm -hmm. disconnection, separation. And so even at the psychological level, what's happening is there's always a battle going on between oneness and separateness. Do we feel separate or do we feel one? And you can actually look at every aspect of life and all makes sense. Relationships, when you're one with your spouse and you feel connected, mm -hmm. you have a really strong relationship. Mm -hmm. The more you get disconnected and you're not communicating well, mm -hmm. communication brings you together, connection builds the bond, commitment fosters it, caring brings a really strong relationship. When you're not doing that and you find separation, the relationship actually starts to deteriorate. So what are the, some of the highlights of the book? Yeah, really key highlights. Well, integrity. The word integrity comes from the word integer, which means whole and complete. So a leader with integrity has wholeness and completeness, right? A leader who has a lot of narcissism tendencies in them or a big ego, that is separation. A narcissist actually believes they're separate and that's why they act 
and focus on themselves. They're not concerned about others because they're focused on themselves because in most cases they've been betrayed or they've had some kind of wound or some kind of past trauma that they're dealing with. And that causes a separation even at the psychological level. The neurological level is a manifestation of the separation neurologically. So they feel separate, they act separate. If we can actually get that narcissist to move towards oneness, towards healing, we can actually find that leader bringing others into the fold. How do you do that? How do you do that? Well, they have to understand, one, the one truth. They have to go through the healing process. And what this book is, is about, basically, Sean McVay said, it's a book about being a whole person and healing that whole and then finding that peace and power and courage. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand how negative thoughts work. Like, negative thoughts will divide you. They will bring you down. And so it's winning the battle every day against the five Ds. Doubt, distortion, which are lies that will tell you things about yourself and your future that aren't true. Negative thoughts are lies. Discouragement, we don't give up because it's hard. We give up because we get discouraged. That fourth D, distraction. Distractions are the enemy of greatness and there's always thoughts coming in that distract you. Oh, go do this, go do that. Oh, that looks shiny. Objects. Yeah, yeah. Sit, sit at the same time, bright and shiny. <laughs> and yet it seems like it's appealing, but it's not very no. good for you, but it might seem good and yeah. it actually leads to your destruction. And then there's that, that 50, which is divide, as I said earlier. Yeah. The root for the Greek word of anxious means to divide. And so once you see these five these and how they play out, they separate, divide you, weaken you. So each day the key is to tune into, and this is what this book is all about, how do I tune into the positive thoughts to elevate my state of mind, tune my antenna, T-U-N-E, trust in truth, unite with the love because love casts out fear, neutralize the negativity every single day, speak truth to the lies as Dr. James Gills taught us, he said, don't listen to yourself, talk to yourself, and then elevate. Wait, wait, repeat that, repeat that. Don't listen to yourself, right. talk to yourself. Yeah, so he completed six double Ironman triathlons. Only person on the planet to do it. Last time he did it, 59 years old. He was asked how he did it. He said this, I've learned to talk to myself instead of listen. He said, if I listen, yeah. I hear all the fear, the negativity, the doubt, the reasons why I can't finish this race. But if I talk to myself, I can feed myself with the words and the encouragement that I need to keep on moving forward. Yeah. And here's the key. I ask people this all the time, leaders, professional athletes, college athletes, do your negative thoughts come from you? And they always say yes, they're in my head. But here's the next question. If you believe your negative thoughts come from you, who would ever choose to have a negative thought? Mm. Would we ever choose a negative thought that says you're not enough? Yeah. The future is hopeless. The initial thought coming in is not from you. Now what happens is you believe the lie. Then you reinforce it. Then you start speaking out loud and then you feel guilt and shame and you beat yourself up for having that negative thought that was never from you in the first place. The key is to realize, okay, I didn't choose that initial thought, but I have the power of the second thought. And each day I could speak truth to the lies, words of encouragement. And guess what? Leaders need to do this more than ever. Their teams need to do it because there's so much negativity coming at people and our teens. Every leader I talk to today has some teen or a child who is dealing with these negative thoughts that are coming in. And I've helped a lot of leaders' kids in the past year on the phone with them, teaching them this. Kids who are su suicidal and depressed turn around after one session by helping them understand their negative thoughts are not from them. What happens is they stop beating themselves up, right. they stop feeling guilt and shame, and they realize, oh, I'm in a battle for negative thoughts, try to take over my mind, I'm gonna win the battle with positive thoughts, just like every hero they love, the epic story. Mm -hmm. You have to overcome negativity with positivity, and when you do, you face the test, you win the battle, and then you triumph and move towards your destiny. That's the journey we're all on every single wow. day. No, I mean, it's, it's, what I'm hearing here is we have a choice. Yes. We don't have to be, and you can kind of rewire your brain um, by just, you know, what you choose to think. I love that you just said that. We have the choice. It's the greatest power we have is to choose. And you know what? It's so funny. You, almost not, you don't have to choose negativity. It just comes your way. Like right, by default, right, yeah. if we're just acting There's and living out that. every day, negativity will take hold and it will be the natural default state. It's like we have this playlist and we have our favorite station. The minute we go into our car, that negative playlist starts to play. So automatically on default, the negativity will play. But we can choose each day the positive. It's harder. It's more worthwhile. It's harder to forgive, but it's more worthwhile. It's easier to be bitter and angry and frustrated. But when we choose that positivity day in, day out, it actually takes our life and our relationships and our teams to the next level. I wrote a book, The Power of Positive Leadership. And positive leadership is all about how positive leaders always find a way forward. Yeah. They always overcome. They figure it the, out. Yeah, the, yeah. the adversity, yeah. the circumstance, <laughs> the negativity. They rally their team and they uh -huh. find a way forward.
Thank you so much, John. It's great. I, I'm looking forward to reading these books. Heck yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope you can autograph a copy for me. Oh, yes. Yeah. In a heartbeat. Great stuff. Uh, thank, thank you for you. joining us. Thank you so much. I love the work that you all do. Thank you.